Hey, Kale Quick here with an update for Project Subby. As always, I have uh, recently made a prototype trigger type thing, and uh, this is at a 170% scale. It doesn't have all the springs and stuff set up. The springs that I ordered were incorrect. It was just a batch of the single spring and not a variety pack of torsion springs. Very annoying. Uh, anyway, this trigger is intended to go and sit in here about there. And you see there is a trigger poking out there that's at uh, actual size and it is quite small. And we've got the uh, hammer back here. Don't want to move it. Nothing's glued in or set. Get a little flashlight there. And you'll see it's in there. And one of the problems is uh, one it's not very tall. There's not a lot of vertical space in there. At the moment, two, using AK grip screws, I have this really tall, I think I measured it at five millimeters in height back here. So the hammer has to clear that to be able to hit the bolt. And not all the parts printed out correctly. I can't hold this while I uh, manipulate this, because I said not all the springs are in there. but uh, it's based on a uh, pistol system where they usually they have kind of a room here for a magazine to pop up in and a transfer bar to go around. So I have to manually hold tension on it like that and I can hold that back. And this is the sear, which if I put a little bit of tension on it, you will be able to hear it click. There you go. Now it's held in place. And if we press the trigger backwards, boom, it goes. Now it's kind of got a wonky curve to it. So the bolt is going to have to come back. And here's the subby bolt. It's been feeling very soft. It's been in that steel tube for a while, and I don't think it's hardened on account of all the scratches. But uh, it's lubricated up now. Anyway, so this has to come back. And remember, this is at a 170% scale. So the real bolt would be much larger than this. Uh, but comes hits the firing pin on the center. And then it needs to be pushed back. And then uh, this curve here is supposed to allow it to be pushed back by there. And then, of course, it has to clear the uh, grip there. Go back and... If there were tension on here, it would click and get ready again. No tension that spring. And then go again. Now, triggers are one of the things that always really confused me about uh, how firearms work. There weren't any good drawings of them in the encyclopedias that I read when I was a, a little kid, uh, which is primarily what I read in real life storybooks. Uh, and I actually successfully reverse engineered a well, actually something just like subby, a blowback action, uh, when I was like eight years old. I didn't build one, but I figured out how they worked without ever having seen the internals of one. So, But I could not do that for a trigger. So first thing I did when I got into the army was, as soon as they gave me an M16, pop that thing open, look and try to figure out how the trigger works. Uh, if you know the AR, it's with a, if you don't know what's going on in AR, it's tough to see and learn because it's very tight in there. Uh, but since then about 16 years ago now. I've learned a lot and uh, I think I've made a good one. This transfer bar here, it actually is nestled in to the trigger there. There's a opening and it pushes back and uh, when it goes forward it actually pulls the transfer bar back. Now the reason I went and have these kind of weird design considerations, let's see if I can open this up on camera here. Uh, boop. I went 170% scale because I designed it to use 3mm pins, and I had some 5mm pins as well. Okay. So, yeah, you see there's a little curve in there. Actually, let me get my camera, or not my camera, the light, where it uh, holds that transfer bar. The transfer bar has a little lip. Ugh. Yeah, just a little lip, raised lip there, that 
contacts the sear. So, and this is back, the sear is pushed down into that notch there, that's what catches it. And then transfer bar pushes yeah, that back. And the idea was that once that goes, the hammer would rotate forward. And you can just about see it right uh, right down there. The uh, angle that the sear up here would have connected, uh, connected to. Yeah, right there. It's come down, and it's supposed to push this off. So when it comes down further, there would probably be a need, need to be another nubbin to push it there, because obviously this is, hammer is going too far forward. But that pushes it off, and that is the disconnector, so that it doesn't, uh, you know, become another felony. <laughs> and then when you pull it forward, uh, let's see if I can get it to go. Yeah. So when you pull it back forward, oh, come on. Yeah, it'll reset. And that'll be the trigger reset. Now again, this is all at one hundred and seventy percent scale, so that I could fit it with these nice five millimeter pins that I have and uh, see if it even works. Now the idea and the reason I have this very strange kind of design uh, up in here of it nesting together is so that all of the trigger components can be laser cut out of a quarter inch steel. And there's a bunch of shops where you could order small batches of parts laser cut. So that was the entire, well not the entire, but that was one of the design considerations was making it so that it can be laser cut and also making it so that it can fit inside of the 10 millimeters that I've given myself inside here. And that is so tiny. I I might have to raise the height again. I can't use an AR trigger because the bolt is too high. So the firing pin is central. And the reason that is, is so that you can actually modify the design. So you can have the magazine from the side you can do the Owen gun, have the magazine feeding from the top, the other side, or a traditional modern feed from the bottom, or any other angle in between. And to make that easy, firing pin is in the middle. Now, a AR, oops, that almost fell, <laughs> AR hammer, it only goes back so far. Uh, this one right now, it's unconstrained and just stabbed me, so you'll see it goes back uh, entirely horizontally. That would get in the way of the grip screw. But an AR1 will only go back about that far, and that is not far enough to allow this to go by. Um, if you wanted to have it high enough that the hammer would hit the center of this, you would need it would not allow the bolt to go back. So you'd need to have a completely different hammer that has like an extension that could come hit it. In addition, I've made this bolt very long, so I have to have this uh, trigger and transfer bar so that I can get the trigger kind of in a as close as possible to the grip without doing something like redesigning the grip. So the grip is back here, trigger is here, so the hammer comes up here and hits the bolt. And uh, hopefully, if it's a laser cut steel, I'll be able to sell them for like, you know, $5. You know, sands, pins, and springs. Those, uh, not sure yet. Uh, yeah, so that was a uh, verbose update there for Project Subby. I'm uh, very proud of being able to get this work. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, again, this is 170% scale. That at 100% scale, even though it looks super tiny with the ones I have in there, uh, if it's laser cut out of steel, they'll be able to have a much higher level of precision than what I'm able to get with my 3D printer. Uh, anyway, thank you for uh, watching this far. Have a lovely day. Don't die.